TensorFlow TensorRadi integration, or TFDRD, leverages TensorRadi inference optimizations within the TensorFlow ecosystem. It provides a simple API that delivers substantial performance gains with minimal effort. In this demo, we will take a look at the API and workflow for optimizing models in TensorFlow, taking the ResNet50 model as an example. To get started, clone the TFDRD examples repo. This contains a number of different examples that show how to use TFDRD. The TFDRD API is part of the TensorFlow library, so we can just pull the TensorFlow container. The container I'm using here is from the NVIDIA GPU Cloud. Once we have the container available in the system, we start the container, mount in the examples repository. And inside the container, we navigate to the path where the examples repository is mounted. And then we start the Jupyter Notebook server. Once Jupyter is up and running, we navigate to the image classification example. In this demo, we will walk through a TFDRD example where we take a ResNet50 pre-trained model from the Keras Model Zoo and use the TFDRD API for optimizing the model. Let's first start by making sure that the GPU is available and visible. Here we see that we have a V100 GPU with 32GB of memory. We then install the required dependencies and import the required libraries. Note that this is an image classification example, so the input to the model will be images. Let's now get some images from the internet to serve as data points for testing. And finally, we visualize those images to see what they look like. So here we see that we have a dog, a bird, a chimpanzee and a snake. The first thing that we want to do now is to take the pre-trained model and see what the class predictions are for the four examples that we have. So we instantiate the ResNet50 model from the Keras model zoo. This, this one is pre-trained on the ImageNet dataset, so running inference will classify it into one of ImageNet classes. So we have a Siberian Husky, a Lorikeet, a Chimpanzee, and a Green Snake. Now note that TFTRD takes as input a TensorFlow saved model for optimization. So we go ahead and export the model as a TensorFlow safe model. Moving forward, to establish a baseline, we first run inference with the native safe model. That is the one without any TFDRD optimization. We simply load the model. And then here, we are doing the simple sanity check by passing in an image of a Siberian Husky to check what it predicts. So it indeed predicted that it is a Siberian Husky with a probability of 0.55. For a test of throughput though, we create a batch of 8 such images and simply pass the batch of images to the model and run it several times to obtain the average throughput. So for the unoptimized model, we see that the average throughput is about 139 images per second. So once we have a baseline, let's optimize the model now. The snippet here shows how simple it is to use TFDRD. First, we create an object to hold the conversion parameters. This, this includes the precision mode, which is used to indicate the minimum precision that TFDRD can use to implement the TensorFlow operations. For example, FP32, FP16, or INT8. Then we create a converter object, which takes in the conversion parameters and the, input, uh, the save model as an input. Next, we call the converter convert method. TFDRD will convert the graph by replacing TensorRT compatible portions with special operations that wrap each supported subgraph. For each instance of this special operation, TensorRT engines are built. The, uh, these engines can be built at runtime or by explicitly calling a build method. Uh, in this case, we just simply leave it for building at runtime. Note that for each portion of the graph that are not supported, they are left untouched and are handled by TensorFlow runtime. After conversion, we simply save the model. We run the same benchmark test as we did before. And this time we observe that the throughput is 1278 images per second, as opposed to the 138 images per second before TFDRD optimization. Let's repeat the same process, this time using half precision or FP16 
What changes here is that you have to specify the FP16 precision mode in the conversion parameters. The rest of the process remains the same. So in here you observe a throughput of 3780 images per second, which is roughly three times of what we observed with the FP32 model. Going one step further, let's look at converting to ATFTRT int 8 model. Int 8 optimization requires a small calibration dataset to be passed to the convert method. This dataset ideally should represent the test data in production well, and it is used for effective 8-bit quantization. We have the same batch of data as before. We specify int 8 as the precision mode, create the converter object, and then here's what is additional with int 8, is that we create a generator function that returns the input data, and this time we pass this to the convert method. We save the converted model, and then we run a test of throughput. For int 8, we observe a throughput of close to 4,000 images per second. So there you have it. We have walked through a simple example of leveraging the TFTRD API to get better performance during inference. Thank you for your attention.